Welcome to Auto Chatter. Today's video is a continuation of the Escort Saga. Where we last left off, the first gen Escort for North America was finishing up its successful run throughout the 80s, and Mercury changed gears, releasing the Tracer to replace the Lynx, a car that was based off an Australian Ford with Mazda roots. The 90s are rolling in, so what subcompact surprises does Ford have in store? Let's find out. As always, facts, opinion, and speculation will be given. Please give a like and consider subscribing if you enjoyed it. Now let's get this escort service rolling. The escort was all new in North America for the 91 model year, and not much carried over from before. Where the original model started off as a Ford of Europe and North America collaboration, the next models for North America had more in common with the Mercury Tracer that we first got here for 1987. The car was built off a Mazda platform with drivetrains from the Japanese company too. The first gen Tracer didn't last long though, as its replacement was going to ring in the 90s. A new Escort arrived in Europe around the same time North America got theirs, but they are not related at all now. What we get was based off of the next generation Ford Laser which we knew as the Mercury Tracer. The Escort Tracer and Laser are now very similar looking and use the front wheel drive Mazda Protégé platform. The Protégé was what the 323 was called now. The new Mercury Tracer came in two body styles, a four door sedan or wagon. The Escort had three and five door hatchbacks like before and the wagon version that was unique to North America. Those automatic front seat belts were standard on both cars and would remain even when airbags were eventually added later. Engine wise, the 1.9 liter 4 cylinder carries over with 88 horsepower on most escorts. The Tracer has one now too, as the previous one was running Mazda engines. Transmission options for Escort and Tracer were Mazda designed 5 speed manual or a 4 speed automatic. Now, if you stepped up to the Escort GT, you got the Mazda dual overhead cam 1.8 liter 4 with 127 horsepower and 5 speed manual. It also was standard with 15 inch alloy wheels, rear spoiler, sport suspension, fog lights and more. If you preferred 4 doors but wanted that beefier engine, the top trim Tracer LTS sedan was standard with it and a 5 speed too. For 91, a 3 door Escort Pony was your cheapest way to get an Escort still and it started around $8,350 or $19,150 today. The least expensive Tracer was about a grand more, but so was an Escort LX sedan, as Mercury didn't have the three doors anymore. The most expensive models were the Escort GT and Tracer LTS sedan, and they started closer to twelve grand then, or about $27,000 today. Neither had things like air conditioning or power locks at those base prices, by the way. Sales of the new Escort were positive, at close to 355000 It was a little inflated as 91s came early, making for a longer model year. Tracer added about 45,600 cars to the tally. For 92, Escort also gets a sedan body style like the Tracer. You could get a regular LX sedan or an LXE model, which was similar to the top trim Tracer LTS with the dual overhead cam 127 horsepower engine. The new fancy sedan was about the same money as a GT, but the GT had features like larger 15 inch alloys and fog lamps standard. So now Escort has a lot of body styles to choose from, with the uh, 3 and 5 door hatches and the wagon still available too. The Tracer pretty much carries over its sedans and wagon versions. Sales in 92 dropped significantly, but again it was a regular model year versus 91. Escorts move around 260,000 and Tracer is just over 43,000. For 1993, Escort LX models have a new sport appearance package that gives you 14 inch alloy wheels, a rear spoiler and full width tail lights like the GT. All Escorts and Tracers besides the GT of course have 14 inch wheels now standard. The fancy Tracer trims before had front grille light bar and now they all had it. Escort sales for 93 hit an all time high for this gen, getting close to 376,000. Meanwhile, the Tracer doesn't quite hit 46,000. For 94, both cars get a driver's airbag 
and by 95 they both now have dual front airbags. 94 sales dip some is about 295,000 escorts and Tracer is just over 46,000. The dual airbags of the 95s however may have been a sales draw as escorts sell an additional 25,000 cars or so this year up from 94. Even Tracer almost hits 52,000. The best selling year this gen for the Tracer. 96 is this generation's last and basically carried over. For 1997, we get an all new Escort. This one is still built off the same Mazda platform like before, but the appearance no longer resembles the Ford Laser overseas. Body style options are reduced to just two like the Tracer Buzz. You could get a four door sedan or wagon now, and the wagon used much of the same body as before. The GT versions were no longer here, but Ford would have a replacement for it, debuting for 1998. Only one engine was available for Escort and Tracer now, and it's a 2 liter version of the 1.9 liter Escorts and Lynxes had for years before. Horsepower was only 110, so calculate merging into traffic carefully. You could still get a 5 speed, but uh, this one was based off the original Ford of Europe one versus Mazda this generation. A 4 speed automatic was optional. Prices for 97 started around 11400 for a base Escort sedan, or just over 22000 today. The Tracer version was only about $125 more. Escort sales for 97 hit about 284000 in sales, and Tracer was almost 43500 98 brings back an Escort GT replacement of sorts with the two-door Escort ZX2. It had a 2-liter ZTEC dual overhead cam 4 standard with 130 horsepower, similar to what the base Ford Contour and Mercury Mystique had. A Mazda 5-speed or 4-speed automatic was your transmission options. ZX2 had two trims, a base cool coupe started at 13,000 or about 24,700 today. The fancier one was called a hot coupe for about $600 more with additional features. The ZX2 performance was welcome, but lacked some previous Escort GT features like four-wheel disc brakes. Still, it was thousands less than an equivalent Honda Civic Coupe then, and had slightly more power. The rest of the Escort and Tracer lineup basically carries over for 98. Escort enjoys a final good year of about 334,500 sold, and the Tracer adds another 33,000. 99 would be the last year for most Escort models, unless you were a fleet buyer. The sedans and wagons pretty much carry over, as all new replacement was coming soon that Europe already had for the 98 model. To capitalize on the growing sport compact scene, Ford offered a ZX2 SR package for about 1500 bucks. I don't think it was a bad deal as you got things like tuned IBAC springs, which lowered the car about an inch, Tokyo struts, better anti-roll bar bushings, B&M short throw shifter, Borla exhaust, Roush intake, 205-55ZR15 tires, center force dual friction clutch, and a new ECM boosting power to 143. Only 2,110 of these were made for 99 and 2000, and about half were either black or red. The other half were yellow. If you wanted the honor of owning one of the last Tracers made, this was your chance and only about 23,000 took the opportunity. Escort wagons were also going away and for the Escort's final full line model year, 260,486 sell. The Escort lingered on from 2000 to 2002, but sales were higher in 99 alone than all of those years after combined, and that includes the X2 sales. The majority of Escort sales in the 21st century were fleet vehicle, and the ZX2 lingered on as a car you could buy through the 2003 model year. About 26,000 of those were sold, and it slipped into the night without any kind of going away party. Now I'm going to rewind the clock a bit, not too far though. The Escort's replacement was being developed in the 90s, and this time the goal was a world car again like the original Escort was supposed to be. This time around though, I think Ford finally accomplished this. The original Escort here and abroad had a lot of changes, and even the more recent Ford Contour slash Mercury Mystique 
and Ford Mondeo were more cousins than brothers. But the all-new Ford Focus was finally bringing them together, for the most part. Europe got it a few model years earlier, but the US market got the Focus for the 2000 model year. It naturally had a European look that used Ford's New Edge design language at the time. 90s jelly bean with some hard creases is how I would describe it, and I personally think it made for an interesting looking entry level car, especially compared to the last Escort that looked kind of like a bar of soap. Other North American sold cars that with the New Edge theme would be examples like the Terminator 99 Mustang and the last Mercury Cougar. The Ford Ka, which wasn't available in the US, would be one of the first New Edge design cars in starting in the mid-90s. Anyway, for its first year in the US, the Focus was available in three body styles at launch. You get a three-door hatch, four-door sedan, or wagon. There was two engines available depending on trim, and they would be familiar to recent Escort buyers. The old 110 horsepower 2 liter returns again in the sedans and wagon, a 130 horsepower ZTEC 2 liter dual overhead cam 4 was standard on the 3 door ZX3 hatch, ZTS sedan, and Sony Limited sedan, which was a fairly well equipped model with a rocking stereo. A ZTS sedan had the most standard equipment, including AC, power windows and locks, and even ABS as part of the trim. The mid-level SE sedans and wagons got the option to up your horsepower gain to the ZTEC. Five speeds were standard or a four-speed automatic was optional. The new Focus had a compact multi-link rear suspension that performed well at a reduced cost and car reviewers were impressed at the time on how good these cars handled. In 2000, Motor Week rated it the best small car and Automobile Magazine gave it their Car of the Year award. The price of admission for a new Focus then started around $12,500 or $22,800 today. This got you a 3-door ZX3 version with the 130 horsepower ZTEC. Oddly, the 110 horsepower LX sedan actually cost a few hundred more then to start. The most expensive ZTS trim started around $15,600 or $28,500 today. Ford was targeting youth buyers hard with these, having uh, commercials on MTV heavily when launched and tie-in marketing deals featuring them on screen on popular shows like Dawson's Creek. It also, uh, Ford also co-sponsored Ricky Martin's tour in 1999. Ford offered some youth-attracting packages and options besides the Sony edition too. There was a Kona edition that came with a bicycle, bike rack, and other unique trim and accessories. Between the positive press and marketing, Focus was a hit in the U.S. and over 342,000 sold uh, for the 2000 model year. Apparently the car was a shot in the arm Ford needed in Europe too, as the previous Escort models were being outclassed by cars such as the Opel Astra and VW Golf and losing market share throughout a good chunk of the 90s. Focus Worldwide was the best-selling car in the world from 1999 to 2004. For 2001, Focus had a new trim level called a Street Edition in sedan or wagon. These all had the bigger engine, European spec suspension, wilder red, blue, and yellow colors, 16-inch rims, black trim, and sporty interior upgrades. Ford has come a long way from the 1981 Escort SS model. And adjusting for inflation, it was only about $2,000 more than the SS was in today's bucks. 2001 moves close to 265,000 Focus models. 2002 offers a new body style, the ZX-5. The five-door hatch is now available in North America. More exciting though was an SVT three-door Focus was now available. It had a reworked ZTEC engine that Cosworth had a hand in developing and had 170 horsepower. The car also had a six-speed manual, 17-inch wheels, and other sporty goodies. It wasn't cheap, starting around 18 grand or over 31,000 today, but had a lot of performance. Overall, Focus sales fall this year to 243,000 or so. 2003 has a Centennial Edition Focus to commemorate Ford being around for a century. 3,000 were made and they came in black, because Model T's originally only came that way. And it's pretty loaded up, including two-tone leather seats 
It also had special commemorative badging and you got some swag with it. A watch, keychain, and coffee table book called the Ford Century. Mazda designed 2.3 liter Duratec four cylinders started becoming available as a focus option in certain trims and regions and they were rated at 144 horsepower. You get a ZX-5 SVT model alongside the three-door now too. Focus sales kept slowly dipping though as it's now just over 229,000. O4s had a few changes and the 2.3 liter engine was now more widely available nationwide. The SVT models were on their last year and only about 14,000 were made from 2002 through 2004. Sales dropped to about 208,000 for all models. 2005 was a refresh year for North America Focus models, while Europe got an all new one. Guess that kind of made sense to me as Europe got the Focus a few years before North America. Anyway, the 05 refresh had some exterior and interior changes and the engine options were simplified. Ford finally got rid of the old engine design the 81 Escort originally had, and all trims but one had a 2 liter 136 horsepower 4 cylinder. The sporty ZX4 ST model with a mandatory 5 speed had 151 horsepower 2.3 liter. This was the trim that basically replaced the SVT ones. Unfortunately, the Focus sales slip again to around 185,000. 2006 offers a new street appearance package for $1,300 that gave you unique front and rear bumpers with fog lights. 06 sales overall were now around $177,000. 2007 models had some new colors and different two-tone leather patterns available. This is also the last year for wagons and the ST model. The final first-gen Focus year ends with about $173,000 selling. Now for the 2008 model year, we get a second gen Focus in North America. Sort of. The rest of the world, as I mentioned before, got an all new Focus for 2005. Depending on the model year and trim, they had horsepower that ranged from 79 to 345. Quite a spread. Also, there were several body styles available like hatchbacks, wagons, sedans, and even a power hardtop convertible. Their Focus models actually had a facelift the same year we got a new one, but it's not really a new Focus here. I'm not even sure if the North American one was even officially considered a second gen. There's no more hatchbacks or wagons, as the only body styles available are two or four door sedans. Want a sporty ST model? Well, too bad, as only, the only engine now is a 2 liter with 140 horsepower. 5-speed was standard, or you could get an optional automatic. Prices started just over $14,000 for a two-door coupe, which is about $20,500 today. But at least air conditioning is now standard for the first time on Focus. The platform it rode on basically carried over from the original Focus, and the styling was refreshed. The interior was also changed out. Sales for 08 did actually climb some from the year before, though, as rising fuel prices made gas zippers attractive and almost 196,000 were sold. Changes were few on this relatively short-lived stopgap model, and 2009 sales dropped to about 160,000. By 2010, the presumably sporty coupes with a manual get the horsepower bump we've all been waiting for. Three more horsepower over the sedan models, if you got a manual. So now it's 143. 2010 sales do rise some though, to about 172,000, so maybe the three extra horsepower mattered. 2011 would be the final year for this Focus, and coupes are dropped, leaving just the I can't wait to rent one sedan models. Sales were about 175,000, so slightly up again. For 2012, North and South America start getting the third gen Focus. Ford again is reverting back to the world car plan, but now has a new name called One Ford. I think this generation was interesting as American buyers finally had the chance to experience some of the more fun models that have been absent here. Mercury was supposed to have the Tracer brought back, which would have been their version of the new Focus, but the car was scrapped as Mercury went away after the 2011 model year. The new Focus was truly a world car as they were built all over in Germany, Russia, Thailand, China, Taiwan, 
Argentina, and the United States. U.S. buyers had four-door sedans or five-door hatchbacks as far as body style choices. 2012s only had one engine available here and it was a 160 horsepower 2-liter 4-cylinder. Transmission options was 5-speed manual or a new 6-speed dual-clutch automatic. Ford called this uh, a power shift. Apparently the clutch pack design isn't very good and reliability issues with this automatic are common. So be warned if you're considering one with it. 2012 models started about 16,500 or 22,400 today. Even base versions have things like power windows and locks standard now. Not a bad price, but you could uh, also more than double that in 2012 if you opted for the new Focus Electric. It was rated at 76 miles of range and the price of admission started at 40 grand or 54,400 today. Add a few more thousand if you wanted leather seats, special metallic paint, and a 240 volt home charger in your garage. Yeah, it was expensive, but you had a $7,500 federal tax credit, and some states like California would throw in another $2,500 at you if you bought one. Total sales this model year climbed to about $272,000, and less than $700 of them are the all-electric ones. The all-electric model was sold here through 2018 and never exceeded 2,000 sales a year at its peak in 2014. Worldwide for 2012, the Focus is the best-selling car in the world. 2013 marks the return of a fun Focus that North America hasn't seen in some time, as the ST model is now available. This four-door hot hatch came with a six-speed manual only and was more aggressively styled and performance-tuned. Power is from a two-liter EcoBoost turbocharged engine that was rated at 252. Price for this new ST started at 23700 or 31700 today. Nice to see a true sporty version again. Otherwise, sales in 2013 drops a bit, just shy of 235000 sold. 2014 largely carries over, and sales fall to about 220000 For 2015, the Focus gets a refresh inside and out, and a new engine option for the U.S. SE models have an optional 1-liter turbocharged engine with 123 horsepower. Six-speed manuals were now available in certain trims, as was five-speed still. Obviously, the manual ST was still six-speed only. The fastest-growing tsunami, known as the crossover, was still doing its part to kill cars, and sales are only about 202,000 for the Focus in 2015. And it doesn't get any better from here. 2016 gives us U.S. buyers the mightiest Focus we would ever get. The new Focus RS arrives and it's a beast. Ford borrowed the 2.3 liter EcoBoost 4 from the Mustang and stuffed it in an all-wheel drive hot hatch with a 6-speed. The result was 350 horsepower of fun and it could hit 60 in the mid-4s, which puts it in the ranks of some serious cars. Unfortunately, they also had a fairly high frequency of head gasket failures. So much so that Ford launched a customer satisfaction program for 2016 and 2017 RS models. Ford would replace the head gasket if necessary, and go further and replace the cylinder head too, depending on their inspections. A 2016 Focus RS started around 36,000 in 2016, or about 46,700 today. 2016 Focus models in total are down to about 169,000 selling. For 2017, the Focus carries on and sales drop again to about 158,000 sold. 2018 would be the final year for the Focus RS in North America, and only about 1,000 are sold in the US and 500 in Canada. Actually, 2018 marks the final year for all Focus models here, and sales were only about 126,500. The Focus lives on in other markets with an all new fourth generation, but not here. Ford made a statement in 2018 that all passenger cars in the U.S. would go away, but the Mustang. So thanks, crossover buyers. Ford did consider bringing a Chinese-built Focus variant that resembled a crossover called an Active here, but it was canceled due to U.S. tariffs on exports from China. The Focus had a good run in the U.S., 
and we got some interesting versions of them, and some not so interesting ones too. Sad to see the Focus leave this market, but they are not alone as other manufacturers have done so too. And so with that, the Escort and Focus tale has to end. I do hope you enjoyed it, and give a like if so. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet and watch some of my other videos. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for your continued support. Bye for now, and until next time, chatter out.